Hello everyone and welcome to the National Young Writers Festival 2022 panel, The Intimacy of Audio. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land I am broadcasting from, the Yagara and Turrbal people. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and to the elders of the lands this recording might reach. My name is Anna Jacobson. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the author of the poetry collection, Amnesia Findings. I'm also a photographer, video maker, and soundscape artist. Joining me on the panel is the wonderful Olivia Muscat and Jani Blakali. Olivia Muscat is a writer, performer, critic and educator. She has had work published in multiple anthologies, including Women of a Certain Rage and Growing Up Disabled in Australia. She has written theatre criticism for Witness Performance and published work in Kill Your Darlings, The Saturday Paper, Refinery29 and other places around the internet. In 2020, she was awarded an Arts Access Victoria Leslie Hall Scholarship. In 2021, she was runner-up in the Kill Your Darlings New Critic Award. And in 2022, she is a Wheeler Centre Hot Desk Fellow. Just so amazing. Jani Blackali is an award-winning investigative journalist based in Melbourne. He has written and produced audio stories for publications such as BBC, Al Jazeera, ABC, SBS, Griffith Review, Choice and many others. He is the winner of a Young Walkley Award and focuses on consumer affairs, the environment, social justice, human rights and international relations. Oh, just so stunning, the both of you, um, just incredible. So to begin, I'd love for us to introduce ourselves through the question, what is it about audio that draws you in as a creator or consumer? And if you are a creator, how does audio work its way into either prose writing, journalism, digital work or poetry for you? So I guess if, um, if Olivia or Jani would like to go first, or I'm very happy to to jump in. Um, for, for me, I sometimes record my poetry out loud at my computer after writing. Um, often I'll add soundscapes to these pieces. And having a poet read their own work in the way they intended and imagined it, and having it recorded can be very powerful because it brings the work to life off the page. And I just, I love documenting in all forms and there's something really exciting about recording sounds or a piece of poetry and hearing it played back years later as a memory. Like a photograph, sound captures age. So I, I thought I'd read you a very short poem from my collection, Amnesia Findings, having just spoken about reading poetry aloud. Um, this one is called French Horn Dream. I get ready to perform a solo, can't read the music, have to play by ear. Dozens of silver rings fall from the bell. I haven't played in so long. The instrument is breaking from the inside. So that's um, just a little introduction to, to my poetry. And um, so I guess um, I'll, um, yeah, as a creator, I also love to layer sounds to create something new, a soundscape that draws me in. In a recent video work I created, Symbiosis is a poetic piece through visuals and soundscapes. In the first sequence I'll share, a woman sits in a darkened desert at night against a starry night sky with shooting stars. An oasis lake rests before her. Four abstract sculptures in the desert go through shifts, their forms opening and closing. A gale begins and the obstructions within the sculptures are blown away, leaving them open. The sound I used are laid over each other. So I recorded the sound of an echoey submerged underwater camera, coin spinning and the sound of a wind up clown to create the sound of mechanical movement, fingernails tapping tin, footsteps on creaky stairs and the sound of a plane flying. So I thought I'd briefly share that 
and then um, let Olivia, I can't wait for Olivia and Johnny to, to hear about their experience. So I'll just try sharing my screen. It's, it's a 45 second um, clip. So I'll just um, give that a go. just um, stop it there and um, thank you so much and um, so thanks, Olivia. Patricia. Thanks Anna. Oh, yeah thank, thank you. you so much. I think it perfectly illustrates I mean the thing I love about audio um, and I mean I, I'd been formulating this sentence in my head and I was like it's just so intimate which is like you know, feeds directly. I didn't just steal it from the title, but of the <laughs> panel, but that is genuinely what I love about it. And I mean, I might be biased, but I think sound is so evocative, like like nothing else. Um, especially, you know, audio, I feel, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like it's something um, as a consumer that you might often experience alone like, you know, with your headphones in or whatever, and just getting that glimpse. It feels like you get a real glimpse into some, how someone's brain works and how you're there, you're right there with them and the deliberate um, choices they've made. And I, I've been pondering this because, you know, you know, I, I watch TV and I watch it basically through audio. I get none of the visuals. And I'm like, but, ha but why does then an audio production feel so different to me? And I think it's because the sounds are so deliberate. Like everything is there for a reason. Everything is is, is a choice that a creator has made to, to make you feel or think um, something particular. And I really, I love that. And I think there's also something really special about reading a work out loud. Like we just heard Anna um, read a piece of poetry that, you know, she wrote and it's so special, you know. Um, Sure, it would be lovely reading that off the page as well, but to really hear someone live and breathe a piece of work like that is is a whole other experience that I don't think can really be matched, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and yeah. Oh, thanks so much, Olivia. Yeah, yeah I certainly yeah. agree with that. And um, in terms of audio that I consume, it is really that. Um, very kind of rich, dense, well thought out um, narrative kind of audio that really appeals to me, podcasts and, and radio. Um, yeah, and as a creator, um, as, a, as a journalist who's worked in audio and made audio documentaries and, and podcasts, um, there's so much thinking and, and time consumption that goes into producing not uh not so much live radio but you know that really audio dense kind of enrich content yeah that's great Absolutely. thanks johnny so um so i guess that that might lead us to the next question um what what devices programs or apps do you use to listen to as a consumer or if you are a creator what do you use to to capture sound and create your recording yeah, so personally, I um, when I've been doing field work and, and getting out and, um, you know, capturing sound for audio uh, documentaries, um, I use a Zoom recorder and a, and a, held, a shotgun held, held handheld road mic. Um, I like the directional element of it and the way that you can really capture a sound. You know, you might be in a noisy environment, you might be at a protest or a rally or, or with a lot of noise around, but it, that really kind of more directional microphone allows you to really capture something in particular. 
Um, and when it comes to editing, I just use the Adobe um, Audition is what I'm most familiar with. Wow. That's great. I'm, I, from the, any audio work, I, apart from stuff that's been professionally recorded by someone else, and that's just a whole other level of fun. Um, <laughs> um, I, I did some recently for a live performance I did where I was interacting with my own voice and talking to the voices in my head and got to record that professionally, and that was fun. Um, but otherwise, for my own sort of stuff that I've done, and I realised I was saying, you know, we were chatting before the panel just between us, and I was like, I've never done anything. And I was like, you've recorded loads of audio stuff. <laughs> um, but I just use my good old phone and then, like, import it to, um, I think because I'm still really in the early stages of experimenting with stuff. Um, I use Audacity because it's accessible for me uh, as a screen reader user. And I can just muck around and play with it and, you know, got plugins and weird stuff to do stuff with sound. And so it's very basic, but I find it very enjoyable. Yeah. Oh, that is so incredible. Yes, I, I love to um, just use whatever is accessible and available um, as well. Um, there was one experience I had um, before. I, I've also been... Um, a musician and photography student. So I was drawn to exploring this really old building. It's, um, well, I guess, it, yeah, it's called the Old Museum Building um, where I rehearsed as a French horn player. And I just loved walking down the old staircase to the basement where there was a broken piano. And I would collect the haunting discordant melodies where all the sounds gathered and whispered like ghosts. And I just recorded on, I had a at the time a small handheld camera, a Canon power shot, um, and it could also capture video and sound. So, so I also did that. Um, I guess, um, yeah, I've, I've found myself over the years building sound libraries, which sounds fancy, but it's just a, a it's not, it's just a collection of sounds. Like I, I love collecting instruments, um, including out of tune instruments. So I found this antique zither um, in an antique store. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I just love creating more ephemeral sounds that can come out of anywhere, like the sound of a door creaking open could come from a dishwasher door. Um, footsteps can be fingertips tapping on a wooden desk. Um, and I use free apps that, that come with a Mac to create and build my recordings and soundscapes. So, for instance, I use the GarageBand program with, with my own instruments and voice to record, then apply filters um, and then continue to layer the sounds in, sometimes in iMovie as well, to create a soundscape. So I was, I was just so, um, yeah, I was so impressed, Jani, with hear, hearing insights into your um, your process as well as a journalist and um yeah just the the different ways of um of collecting sounds with with what's accessible so thank yeah, you yeah i think the um the main experience i've had is just in terms of when you are out recording sounds for something like a, a piece of journalism or an audio documentary is just to record way more than you need because um yeah. when you come back into the yeah. studio you're always going to wish you'd recorded that or, or wished you had 15 seconds of the ambient noise of that dishwasher in the background or whatever it is. Um, and is it, oh, sorry. No, no, good. Is, is it ever a case that you record stuff and you go back and listen to it and you didn't even realise you you captured something really pivotal or just really tiny but really meaningful? Like, does that ever happen to you when you're out recording, you know, stuff at events or, you know, whatever it might be? Yeah, I think you don't, you're never sure about what you're going to use, but, you know, you find that, uh, at least I found that, um, I, so I was in Malaysia a few years ago doing an audio documentary about um, these people who would, uh, so the, the roads in Malaysia are very bad um, and there's lots of potholes um, and the government doesn't do anything to fix them, basically. Um, so these people who were essentially, they called themselves vigilantes, they would go out at night and um, just fix the roads. That was like their form of uh, civil disobedience. They would make videos and, and social media of themselves um, filling up the potholes and actually just repairing the roads. 
so I did a um, audio documentary on these this group of people for um, ABC Radio National and um, there was just so many sounds and and different things that that I could use when it came back to the editing process you know from different car sounds to different just the crunching of feet on gravel and things like that so um, it's always better to have way more content than you need and when you're coming back to edit yeah that, that's an incredible insight and um really really fascinating as well oh well I, I'd, I'd be so keen to um to hear how how you first um got into sound recording for both of you what was the spark and if you are more of a consumer than a creator what are the benefits and joys of audio storytelling and when did this love begin so I guess um, lots of levels to that question. But yeah, it was a very big <laughs> Yeah, it's very big, big but I, I guess it's essentially so when did it all begin mm. for you? I think for me it was an accident because oh, a... I, I used to record everything in high school, like all my lessons and in fact at uni as well and we just like record everything because I didn't want to take notes <laughs> yeah. um I just wanted to listen and be able to remember it later and then I would always find that in the background of like the teacher droning on about biology or whatever um there was always something interesting happening in the background with sound and I just always really found that amusing and entertaining and I didn't realize what a great and like how creative it could be as well. And I sort of put it aside for a while. And then a couple of years ago, I went to a, it was like, it was during a Melbourne lockdown and um, Chambermaid Opera were running a, a sort of practice, a creative practice day completely on Zoom. And they decided to focus on sound, you know, sound installations and performance and stuff. And we heard from a Canadian um, artist called Janet Cardiff and she makes these amazing sound walks and soundscapes and it just really got my brain ticking over and inspired um, and that's when I sort of decided that was something I really wanted to play with and made my own um, thing for a commission that I sort of had license to do wherever I wanted um, so I decided I was going to do sound art now um, <laughs> um, and again it's it's something that kind of gets put to the back of my practice just because I'm trying to do 50,000 things at once. But when I get to do it, I find it so joyful. And so I just love getting down into the little details of whatever it is that I'm trying to portray or record or make people feel. <laughs> it's often very abstract and a bit strange, but yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say for me, um, I, uh, kind of got into audio through, um, through initially through community radio, a place called Sin, which is a youth community radio station in Melbourne. Um, I did some work with them and some volunteering with them. And um, yeah, and really kind of got attracted to audio and started really enjoying the process of making things. But um, something that I really, you know, um, some stories that I've done have been you know in situations where the person is wanting to remain anonymous and things like that which becomes very difficult if you're doing that on a visual level you know if you're filming someone um you know it's possible but it's very difficult and but you know people are much more comfortable if you're sitting there without a camera you're just sitting there with a microphone people are comfortable to share themselves and comfortable to to be themselves um and yeah you often find really great um little stories that people come come with come to you with in a much more comfortable way than when you're filming or doing other work what about yeah. yourself Anna? oh that's great oh i love both your your stories olivia and johnny um mine i'm i don't know i'm a bit embarrassed but no I, I, I will say, <laughs> uh, my my first recording device was a yak back toy i don't know <gasps> Yes. yes it's so i was given it to my but um by my parents when i was 10 and for those who don't know on yakbacks you can record whatever you want for six seconds then make it instantly play back back as helium or chipmunk sounding or very low and deep depending on 
how far you push the side wheel up or down. So I just love that. And um, and also around this age, I made um, pretend radio shows with my brother by recording over my mum's classical music tapes with an old cassette player. Um, so I had the tapes of those radio shows we made digitised decades later and just hearing them play back is like a time capsule. So I, that that's kind of sparked me. And that's I love amazing. to hear... It's so I lovely that you have that. That's so nice oh, that you've got you. it accessible to you. Thank also, you. you've unlocked a massive, like, just <laughs> huge childhood memory by just mentioning yakbacks. How did yeah. I forget that? <laughs> Oh, they're so fun. Going from, so we've gone from the spark and now I guess we could go to um, why do you think audio has taken off so much or had a resurgence in the 21st century? So moving to the here and now, I guess um, audio is such an immersive medium, but um, anyone, um, Olivia, I feel you, you might have a lot to, to say mm. on on this or or Johnny as well you're most welcome to to jump in I, I wanted to hear what everyone else thought because it's something <laughs> I wonder about all the time and I haven't managed to come up with an answer that I like um yeah. hmm. just, uh, is it is it that we're all so busy doing so many things all the time that audio is an easier thing to consume but it's easy to consume but it's got so much to it and can say so much and mean so much and teach us so much. I don't know. I haven't come up with an answer that I'm happy with. So, oh, Johnny, would we, would you like to <laughs> attempt this this tricky one? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it is interesting that you know, like traditional listening to radio is probably on the way down mm. in, in broader population sense, but you know, podcasts and other kind of audio is has yeah as you said had a huge resurgence um yeah i don't i don't know the answer to that one in particular but it does seem that you know every second person is making a podcast these days and mm. there's just a, there's so much content out there that there's you know so much more than anyone could possibly consume yeah i get so overwhelmed by how much actually exists that i sometimes i, I don't know there's too much i don't know what to listen to yeah, I think just... there's probably probably accessibility of creating content is is a big factor as well. You know, with yeah, yeah. technology and smartphones and you know and and the quality of the audio recording on a smartphone now is is so much better than you know anything that was around 10 15 years ago that anyone can kind of create audio and create these stories that are um, so prevalent. And there's sort of less of a commitment maybe because it's so accessible so you don't have to decide say if you wanted to be a film director you might go that is my career goal but if you wanted to I don't know do a podcast about fruit picking I don't know um <laughs> <laughs> like you can sort of you can do that because of how accessible you know it is with the technology we have available to us yeah such interesting points I think yeah, all I could think of was that, um, yeah, audio, it has this immediacy to it that mm. can draw you in and um, almost like a, a presence sitting with you and the work. Um, so that can hold a lot of comfort for some for people, I think, sometimes. And, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, I guess... Um, yeah turning now to um to dreams um i love dreams and um i was wondering for you both what would be your dream audio project or it might not have to be a project but it could be um a tool or um yeah do, do any do either of you have a something you'd like to work on in the future or i guess um <laughs> Yeah, I <laughs> oh yeah, I guess um, for me it would be awesome to work on sound for for theatre or an animated film. I just I don't know if I saw it on Sesame Street once when I was really little, but these um, sound artists using all these different materials to just create these incredible effects on like just scrunching bits of plastic. Um, I don't know that really excites me for some reason. Just 
yeah, bringing something to life. Do you know that Sesame Street have a podcast where they, they? Follow, the, they follow the adventures of a, sound, uh, a character named Foley um, and he, uh, their adventures as a, as a sound, you know, making sound effects and stuff. So, oh, my gosh. That's so <laughs> amazing. Your dream, Anna. <laughs> oh, yes. I will definitely check that out. Thank you, Olivia. No worries. I haven't listened to it myself, but it is out there. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Thank you. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of agree. I love to work with sound in a live context. So, like I was saying before, I've done a bit where I've recorded my own voice and interacted with, with it and um, reacted to it. And I've got another project coming up where I'm hoping to do a similar thing. Um, but I think also, and it sounds like there's less production involved and stuff, but I would just love to narrate an audiobook that I'd written. I think that is my ultimate goal. I just would love to have written a book and be able to narrate it and have people listen to me um, reading my own words. And that's not to say that it couldn't involve sound design because there are so many great audiobooks that have amazing sound design and music and acting and the whole lot. Um, but I don't really write books that lend themselves <laughs> to that sort of stuff. But maybe one day, who knows? Yes, Olivia, I cannot wait to to hear your audiobook. I will be <laughs> the first person in line <laughs> to like. First download. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's, um, hey, you can yeah. line up. That's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't Thank know where. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah I, I can't wait for that. Um, that's a really exciting um, dream. Um, Johnny, how about you with, with your journalism? And, yeah, um, I don't have a particular project in particular, but um, I've kind of moved away from some of that audio practice um, in the last few years just because of other work commitments and um, other focuses. So just getting back to that would be really great. I really um, I loved making audio and, and making audio documentaries and, and short segments for different different programs. And yeah, just, yeah. just uh, getting the microphone out and getting that practice, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I guess um, I, I talked earlier about um, the, the old museum building and I, I do have um, another kind of soundscape I'd love to share if, if that's okay. In, in the first sequence of my work, scenes from the old museum building, um, I hold a French horn in front of a broken piano in the basement. And after playing the first refrain on the French horn, black piano sharp keys appear in a circle on the floor. And they move like ants in an antique clockwise direction while I move the opposite way within the circle. And murmurs and sounds from the musicians in the studio above emanate. Old sheet music appears on the piano, pages turn by themselves to the sound of the pinging of the out of tune broken piano on the only keys that work. The pages of music fall to the floor and the sharp keys make their way back to the piano's body. So Can I just say that even hearing you read that out is just <laughs> an example of how lovely and creative an audio medium can be. Oh, thank like, you, Olivia. Just painting such a picture, you know, with, with words. And it would, wouldn't be the same if, if we were, you know, reading it on a page. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Um, here we go.
Thank you. So Thanks. I just Thanks um for doing that, Anna. That's okay. Thank you so much. I just really love out of tune instruments. Um, it sounds like I, a piano that my grandparents used to. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. What is the relationship between a speaker and listener and how is it similar or dissimilar to the relationship between reader and writer? So does anyone want to have a go at that one? Oh, wow. I think the main um, way in which it's dissimilar is that, um, I mean, obviously you can, you can stop and pause and continue an audio piece, but for the most part, when you're listening to a piece of audio, if it's a, a half an hour consumption, you're going to be listening to it through um, mm. and kind of, I guess the maker of the audio is is setting the pace and setting the terms of that engagement mm. where um, for a reader and a, and a writer, um, there's a, a different relationship there. Yeah. Do you think there's less opportunity for a listener to subjectively um, consume something. So is there is there less opportunity for your own interpretation? I mean, obviously there is still room for that and there is still room for something to be different to everybody. But maybe the creator has more uh, chance to inform how, how the listener sees something. That's, I kind of get yeah, that feeling. That's so true. Like setting the tone that, that um, reading might not necessarily um give and maybe emphasis on different words so it's bringing it to life but it can also mm. um yeah that's a really interesting point olivia yeah i always find you just you just even as for something as simple as an audiobook um or, or a reading it's always really different to hear an actor read something or a professional narrator and the author themselves there's yeah. such a different feeling between the two and I think they're both valuable and important you know interpretations and ways of communicating but I think yeah they're, they're just so different setting the different tone yeah just just even by something as basic as pausing and emphasis and that stuff that we sort of probably don't notice unless we're paying attention but it has such an impact on how how we you know hear something or yeah oh, and um i guess yes i guess how important is the omittance of sound mm. or audio in audio work and does this enhance the intimacy so having gaps yeah, i think and, the gaps yeah. and breathing spaces and things are really really important and um this i don't you know, I know some people listen to things sped up and whatnot, but for me, I always listen to everything at the original pace <laughs> yeah. as intended um, to to really get those breaths and those pauses and the emotion that comes in a, in a piece of audio work. Yeah. And I always find that having the breaths edited out of something, you know, sometimes it's necessary, but they they add so much, the pauses and the breaths and the the sort of lingering over certain things or, or, you know, speeding past them. I think there's something to be said for letting something speak for itself without being edited. I remember um, I, I made a podcast a few years ago about, um, it was about democracy um, and, and the voting process as opposed to politics. But mm. um, as a part of that, I interviewed this woman who um, went and, voted on behalf of her friends who couldn't be bothered going to vote um so this woman would would show up and vote like four, four or five times <laughs> at an election um and i remember that interview very vividly because she was so awkward in describing it but i left all those silences in there and it kind of helped create and convey that you know the the ethical ambiguity of what she felt like she was doing um in that in that context um and that was really created through leaving those gaps and through leaving those silences and she would ask me questions like you know is that you know oh uh, you, you'd do that as well wouldn't you or, is that okay? <laughs> and, and i just I, I didn't respond and i just left yeah. those silences in there yeah yeah and i mean that's how you're getting a sense of who this you know person is i suppose unless you've got you know um 
a narration um, element or, or some sort of voiceover. Like that's how you're getting the understanding of who we're dealing with. Um, and especially that, I suppose that especially might matter in a journalism context. Um, you know, who, who are these people that are being interviewed? You know, what's their, what's their story? And uh, apart from what they're actually saying, how they're saying is a big part of, you know, understanding who they are or connecting or not connecting with them. Yeah, yeah. totally. Well, that's great. And um, I guess um, to, to finish tonight, I guess we could maybe talk about tips for writers wanting to experiment or start working with audio work. I feel um, sometimes it's just um, like what we were discussing at the beginning, just whatever recording device you have available, just mm. go for it using what you have. And um, and then and Johnny might be able to talk about the more professional side of, um, <laughs> of, of um of audio recording with, with his journalism knowledge, but I think um yeah, just starting with using what you have and what you have. I think that's such an important point, Anna. And I think something that I sort of always had in the back of my head, but really changed after I listened to um, Janet Carter speak about her practice and her work is she had such an emphasis on play. Um, and just playing around and I think that's that's how you start and that's how you get better like you just having I was about to say just having a go this is not grade five um but you know <laughs> just doing it and playing around and enjoying yourself that's that's what I would recommend and yeah like Anna says just use what you've got and have a have a muck around yeah I would yeah, I mean I would totally yeah. agree with that you get yeah. you only get better at something by doing it and um yeah i mean but th there are also places like like sin like all the best which is a program on fbi radio in sydney um but they they're a national program as well um they you know provide training and support for people who are wanting to make audio documentaries and, and audio um, pieces of audio work so yeah, reaching out to places like that, but also just, yeah, as Olivia said, not being afraid to just, you know, give it a crack and, and start recording things and playing in the editing suite and just working up, working out what sounds you like. Oh, that's really wonderful. Um, oh, thank you so much for joining me tonight, Olivia and Jani. It's been so wonderful being on the panel with you. Um, I feel we've um, uh, gotten some real insights and into um, into audio and yeah. So so thank you so much. Thank you, Anna, for moderating so nicely. So oh, ooh, thank you. I just went into teacher voice there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the intimacy of the audio. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Johnny.